Whenever you walk outside, you hear insect buzz, but you also hear the whoosh of like large birds flying by. And then you have this characteristic buzz of the hummingbird. So you have all these animals that flap their wings and they make these sounds. And I'm just super curious, where is it coming from? And can we actually understand it and predict it? David Lentink and his group study everything that flies. But for all their sophisticated equipment, they lack the instruments to locate the exact source of sounds. The real challenge is how do you record these sounds and how can you locate them in space? I needed many microphones, like an array of microphones, so we can localize the sounds. But the real challenge I had is that I don't have these microphones in my lab. This is Rick Schulte. He does have microphones, lots of them. This is an acoustic camera. And an acoustic camera is a combination of an array of microphones together with an optical camera. It works a little like a thermal imaging camera. So what you see here is the visual light camera and the acoustics, the acoustic heat map is projected over it. So where you see a red dot on the screen, it means that most sound is coming from that position. So you see sound. That's exactly what David Lentink needed. So I contacted him and I said, well, uh, how about uh, coming over to California? I have some sunshine, some coffee to offer, uh, and you bring your microphone array so we can do some fun recordings on hummingbirds. A few weeks later, I uh, uh, boarded the plane with two flight cases and four acoustic cameras. In total, we had uh, 2,176 microphones together. In addition to all these microphones, more than 2,000, we also set up multiple high-speed cameras to record the wings' motion in 3D. This fan is mimicking the uh, hummingbird. The hummingbird will typically fly around, move to the flower, get the nectar, hover, and move back to its perch. The whole setup will be boxed off with this black material. In the original setup, there is about 15 high-speed cameras surrounding the setup and a lot of uh, measurement equipment. Uh, so it's vitally important that the hummingbird simply sees the flower and its perch and is not stressed out by the technology around. We only selected male hummingbirds because they don't take care of the young and we wanted to make really sure uh, that we would not disturb any nests. So we took the male hummingbird whenever we caught one, brought it into the lab, uh, showed it where the flower was and then it would voluntarily fly up to the flower back and forth. And then when the recordings were done, which was before the end of the day, we would return it at the place where we caught it. From the hummingbird's perspective, it's just a spa. We offer flour with unlimited sugar water and they fly up whenever they want to. What we did is we made recordings on six hummingbirds measuring the sound. Well, what's, uh, what's interesting actually uh, acoustics wise is that the hummingbird is a very small bird with small wings and it's creating this uh, low frequency hum. It's beating its wings 40 times per second, 40 hertz. That would be the most annoying tone you would have ever heard. It's like a buzzer uh, for a doorbell or something, like really terrible sounds. But that's not what we're hearing, so what's going on? To really understand where the sound is coming from, you also need to know what sort of aerodynamic forces the hummingbird is generating to hover still into the air. Because we hypothesized that the pressure associated with those forces is moving back and forth. And so we had to build another setup that enabled us to measure these forces together with the wing motion. And then we connected the two recordings, so the recordings of the sound and the recordings of the forces with math to see if the forces can predict the sound. After four days, all the research was completed. 
But the math afterward took more than three years. You film the motion of the wing in slow motion, which you have to analyze frame by frame to know the orientation of the wing at every moment. And then you need to synchronize those acoustic recordings together with the video and the forces. The measurements that we took had variations of milliseconds or even microseconds. So we had to take even the distances between the microphones and the traveling times of the acoustic waves into account into the calculations. And then the wonderful thing about math is that we can tie these two experiments together and those match perfectly. When the wing is moving around, actually the pressure field around the wing is reoriented in space. And that reorientation is what we hear because we hear the sound field come by over and over again with 40 wing beats per second. And that's the source of the humming sound. But what is it that makes this sound so pleasing? A hummingbird wing is really like an instrument, like a violin, like a piano. There's not only this bass frequency, uh, so the 40 hertz, but there are actually multiples. Uh, while it's flapping, it's also generating tones at higher frequency, at double, so at 80 hertz, at triple, so 120 hertz. Those are the higher harmonics, and that is what gives the quality of an instrument. And that is what makes humming so beautiful. And what's cool about the mathematical model is that it predicts all these higher sounds as well. And so that's how we really understand how hummingbirds hum and why it's so beautiful. And what is the practical use of these findings? What's really cool about a math model like this is that you can all of a sudden tune into the behavior and start to understand how they are communicating, generating sound with their wings. In addition, there's a practical use in product design, in the engineering of drones, for example. No one wants a, a loud drone in their environment. So what you can do with this camera technology is see exactly which parts of the wings of the drone are creating the noise how the dynamics behave. And with these type of insights, engineers can try to make a product super silent, but it's often impossible. So why not design a product in such a way that it makes a nice sound or a pleasing sound, like a hummingbird.